Good morning and welcome to Stanford Methodist Circuit online prayers for Sunday 3rd of November 2024. My name is Audrey Hensman and I am a Methodist local preacher based at Stanford Methodist Church. We will be thinking today about the story of Ruth from the Old Testament alongside some of Jesus' teaching recorded in Mark's Gospel. But first we sing hymn number 58 from Singing the Faith, Lord, I come before your throne of grace. Find rest in your presence and fullness of joy in worship and wonder I behold your face singing what a faith. We're bringing a prayer of adoration and confession and with acknowledgements to the Church of Scotland's worship site. Let us pray. 
God of all seasons, God of all time, God of all words, we come as we are, out of time, out of thoughts, out of reason, yet seeking time to be, reasons to be, and most of all, to be calm in your presence, ready to listen and know and follow and obey. Holy God, in all of history, your guidance has been there, muddled and devalued by words like command and order. When what you seek of us is desire, love, compassion and hope. Forgive us when our lives are full of commandments and rules and bereft of compassion and love. Forgive us when our word becomes more than Jesus the Word made flesh, when our determination to adhere to the devalued Word belies your spirit of joy and hope. Show us gently, humbly, lightly and softly how to follow, how to be guided into obedience and teach us acceptance of your love, your forgiveness and your compassion. Because we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We hear an excerpt from chapter one of the book of Ruth, followed by a reading from Mark, both read by David Suchet. Ruth, chapter one. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Marlon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they lived there about ten years, both Marlon and Kilian also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband, even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons. Would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go I will go, and where you stay I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. The story of Ruth has it all. Death and despair, love and loyalty, trust, hope and faith. It reflects the plight of women and refugees throughout the ages, struggling with grief and loss in a world that devalues and denies their basic rights, as true today as it was 3,000 years ago. It also reminds us of what women can achieve when they support one another, especially remarkable in a male-dominated society all those years ago, and as we have seen in recent times, with campaigns like the Me Too movement and the ongoing, ongoing global fight for equality. As a love story, Ruth's story is timeless, a story not just of romantic love, but what Jesus describes as love of God and altruistic or agape love for our neighbour in any age and in any place. The widowed Ruth was willing to give up all hope of personal security and children of her own when she chose to stay with Naomi, her mother-in-law. Ruth was a Moabite woman, a people despised by the Jews, but she was blessed for her faithfulness to her mother-in-law and to the God that Naomi worshipped. Ruth went on to become a wife and mother, a great-grandmother to King David and a direct ancestor of Jesus. Ruth's story tells us of how God's love is for all people, irrespective of race or background. It was then and is now, in spite of our attempts to box God in and to establish his exclusive rights to his grace and favour. Some 500 years after Ruth's story was written, we heard of Jesus' encounter with a scribe who genuinely wanted to know what Jesus considered to be the greatest commandment. Scribes were experts in the Jewish law. Based on the Ten Commandments, there were at least 613 laws, and scribes would tie themselves in knots trying to work out their order of importance and the punishments for breaking them. Without batting an eyelid, Jesus quoted the Shema, the central prayer of Judaism, that declares, God the Lord is one. The greatest commandment, he said, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Do that and the remaining commandments will automatically be fulfilled, not least the next greatest commandment, to love your neighbour as much or as little as you love yourself. Today's readings present a challenge, for we are confronted by standards directly set by Jesus himself Readings that tell us something of God, something about ourselves and the relationship between us. I don't know about you, but I find it helpful to be able to compare and contrast different ideas with things that I know before making up my mind. How can I love God, honour Jesus and walk with the Holy Spirit in love, faith and joy? And how well do I love my neighbour? Perhaps it's easier to start with myself, how I love me. Not with harmful indulgences like too much chocolate, but how do I nurture my physical, mental and spiritual well-being with food, word, rest, food, work, rest and exercise? Do I respect myself? Compared with that, how well do I love my neighbours and care for their well-being? whether nearby or far away? How do my lifestyle and choices impact theirs? 
do I love my neighbour as much as I love myself or as little or less than I love myself? And consequently, how does this reflect how much I love God, if at all? For as, as St Paul and John Wesley make clear, faith without good works is dead. Our Old Testament story of Ruth describes what one young woman's love of God and neighbour entailed, giving up everything in love and service of Naomi. The ultimate measure of human love is of course found in Jesus, the man who was God inside, the one who came to save the world, not to condemn it. The one whose love for us was finally expressed in his death on the cross and his rising again to be an abiding presence in our life, yours and mine, by the power of the Holy Spirit. As Christian people, and especially as a company of Methodists together, our calling surely is to embody the love and truth we find in Jesus, rather than merely talking about it. In other words, to proclaim and demonstrate his love for all people in everything we think, do and say. John Wesley famously asked, is your heart as true to mine as mine is to yours? If so, give me your hand. What he didn't mean was, if you join my church or worship like me, then give me your hand. But if your heart is right with God, if your heart is enlarged to encompass all humankind, if you embrace all people, no matter their race, religion or lifestyle, then give me your hand. It is then and only then that we become God's bridge builders and a community of saints fulfilling the mission of the church in the world today. Amen. We sing again from singing the faith, there's a wideness in God's mercy. So let us pray for the world in which we live, for those in need of hope, victims of war and violence, victims of abuse and their tormentors, people who are hungry in body, mind or spirit and who thirst for life in all its fullness. Bring them, we pray, with us into your promised kingdom. We pray for those who are sick, people known to us at home or in hospital, those who will die today and all who will grieve their loss. 
Bring them, we pray, with us into your promised kingdom. We pray for those celebrating new life, babies born today, families seeking reconciliation, couples pledging themselves to one another, people released from anything that enslaves. Bring them, we pray, with us into your promised kingdom. We pray for leaders of people and nations, in national and local government, in military organisations and in peace initiatives. Bring them, we pray, with us into your promised kingdom. We remember workers in our community, providers of statutory services, volunteers in caring organisations, shopkeepers and street cleaners. Bring them, we pray, with us into your promised kingdom. And we pray for your church on earth, with thanks for all who have gone before, for ministers and preachers and teachers of the gospel, for administrators and stewards, for counsellors and guides, and for all who name the name of Jesus. Bring them, we pray, with us into your promised kingdom. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is from Singing the Faith, number 610. Best of all, God is with us. And so may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with each one of us this day and forevermore. Amen.